Driving over Sandy M Pass, Highway 22 right now, just turned off from Highway 20. And it is just like beautiful jet trails, um, snow melting in the trees. I mean, this is one of those perfect spring days to drive over the mountain. And thankfully my radio station ended up cutting out so I didn't have to listen to more coronavirus stuff. I feel like I know everything I need to know at this point. And um, I'm driving into Portland, which feels a little bit odd that I'm doing kind of social events when the radio just told me social distancing is key. So my plan is to, you know, honor that, wash my hands a lot, stay three feet away from people. And um, I have this big truck and trailer and camper, so it's pretty easy for me to socially isolate. All right, I made it over Sandy M Pass. I'm now down kind of in the foothills of the valley. And the other day I had kind of a slow leak in one of my trailer tires. I put air in it and I forgot to check it. Well, I mean, it seemed tight on my way, but I'm gonna go back there and see it. I'm hoping air is holding. Otherwise, we're gonna have a delay. Good, good. Look at this forest. Oh, boats are all looking good. Look at that. Whoa. Good. Good. All right, tires are good. Uh, it's about 45 degrees here. I meant to stop early, but all the trail, all the boats, boats are looking good. Believe it or not, that's how they're supposed to look. It's running good, I'm just leaving it idle. Why don't we get a little forest time here? Look at that. This is like Return of the Jedi Forest. Look at that tree. And then everything, moss growing everywhere. Oh, look at that one right there. That is a big tree. Let's go check it out. fuzzy tree. Got a little creek coming through here. Okay, I'm over the mountain. Now we've got the deciduous trees kicking in there. And uh, yeah, I had somebody supposed to meet me tomorrow to go paddling canoes. They canceled. They have a bit of a uh, compromised immune system and their wife didn't want them coming down from Washington State. Last week I had two canoe orders, really nice canoes, canceled by folks that had already ordered them with the stock market drop and craziness. They just weren't ready to pull the trigger. So uncertainty is already rearing its head in the paddle sports industry. my hand washing station, spray bottle, soap. I got the sanitizer and pretty much self-contained with food. I just delivered it in Lake Oswego, Oregon and I'm driving my big rig through this little neighborhood. The house I delivered to is right on the lake. So it's always funny when a guy like me and my truck and trailer come through a neighborhood like this. I always get some funny looks. Usually get into uh, more conversations usually sell a couple more boats. It's like being Santa Claus going through a neighborhood like that. But this day and age in Portland, they see a camper come through their neighborhood, they think I'm moving in, which is an all too often occurrence. So I always have to, a neighbor starts looking at me, like, you moving in? You gonna live outside my driveway? Because people do that here and they can. There's nothing you can do about it. And I always wave to them and say, I'm leaving in five minutes. Because as good as they think their neighborhood is, I don't want to stay here for longer than I have to. I like my neighborhood. Man, what would it be like to grow up in this neighborhood? Look at that, there's a little canal right to the lake. I don't know if I caught that. It's like my favorite exercise to do while repping is just to like look, drive slow, annoy people behind me. I've got one, two, three, four, five cars behind me right now. 
And just like imagine, like what would it be like to live here? I, when I moved to Portland in 2000, I actually kind of lived close to here, not quite as nice in a rental. Um, so I have a little bit of it, but on a sunny day like this in the spring, when like Portland is in its full glory, everything's blooming, it is just awesome. Oops, wrong turn. I'm gonna go this way, through the school zone. That's serious. Look at the land yacht. And uh, it likes the bigger roads, the bigger oceans, the bigger seas, like the interstate, where you will find me cruising the right hand lane, nice and slow and easy. This rig weighs, well, I don't really want to say what it weighs on the internet, but it's heavy. Onward. The key with Portland is you have to be done moving around the, the town uh, ideally by 3. It's 321 right now, so I'm sure I'll run into something. But if you try to cross from Portland into Washington after 3 o'clock, you're going to hit the I-5 bridge between the two states. And that traffic backs up to like 7 miles. You're waiting an hour, hour and a half. It's terrible. So you got to get, you really can only drive around this town for like half the day. Um, same with Seattle. And bam, didn't make it traffic. Look at that. There's the waterfront. Willamette River down there. And you got Mount Hood in the background. You can see. Beautiful. Oh, this is one of my favorite spots. I'm in south uh, west Portland. I used to live right up on the hill up there when I first moved out west. And this is just a cool little neighborhood called John's Landing. Right now, I'm at Portland Kayak Company. Mike, John, and Annie own this. I've been calling on them for years. It's just like a boutique curated, exquisite shop. Let's take a look inside. Right off the bat, you just hit in the face with some really nice touring boats. That's one of their specialties. They don't mess around when it comes to paddles either. Just the best paddles from all the manufacturers. There's Aquabound over there. They've got some Werner, some Epic paddles. They carry Sterling kayaks, Current Designs kayaks. And they also, of course, carry Eddyline and a Canadian thermoformer called Delta kayaks. I've got a lot of dragon boaters around here, so they always keep a stock of dragon boats. They have a whole really neat, you can immerse yourself in the industries. PFDs, a bunch of Stolquist, they've got some Astral, they've got a full kids supply, dry suits as well. I already talked to Mike, the owner. He hits a stopwatch when I came in, so I can't talk to him anymore, but there he is. About 20 minutes of me is enough. They've got the wetsuits, a few stand-up paddle boards, and even some surf skis. And then they have quite possibly the coolest back room you'll ever come into. They're right on the Willamette River. Anybody that comes here to paddle, they just uh, give you a cart if you're renting and you can carry your boat right down. Um, this is their little, their whole back area. They actually, right there, even rent location for people to keep their boats um, down here on the river so you don't have to car top every time. I also love that they're always working on a boat or fixing something or cleaning something up. So if you ever need help on a kayak and you're in the Portland area, Mike is really good with composites. I learn from him every time I come here. They're not just a touring shop. They always have a little bit of a fishing offering here as well. And as we walk around, I'll... They usually have kind of a few boats that might not be part of their main line or some of the odds. They still have an Eddie Line Shasta right there. Some people are after that and they have Delta's Tandem. Um, and they also, of course, have the Whisper right there as well. So look at all these Tandem offerings. Just your basic entry level sit on tops. And then all their rental stand-up paddle boards here. There's their little repair bench that I see Mike working on boats. They take care of their stuff here. If you're coming down to rent, you're going to get the best equipment, great fitting PFDs. Look at all those carts they have ready to go. They're getting ready for the season. I love hanging out here. They're always really kind to me. Uh, Willamette Park is in their backyard. So you can, um, if you already own your boat, you can park, go for a paddle, then come up and say hi to the crew. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I mean, they even have a great choice right there in posters, yours truly. All right. I'm gonna take that one right there, Sitka ST. I got a lot of red boats this year. Ooh, look at that one, brand new. 
brand new for me. Out here, finally charging up for the night. Look at that cool place. Whoa. Anyway, sun just went down the West Hills there in Seattle. Long day on the roads and the phone. And uh, right here on the Willamette, just a nice little spot. Exactly what I needed. It, uh, just water therapy, paddling. It's so gorgeous out here. I'm the only boat on this entire river. And I've only been paddling for like 45 minutes. I got into that little uh, paddle meditation rhythm. I was almost not gonna like stop, and I just don't want to get off the river. I'm gonna just sit here and keep watching the sun go down. And uh, just listen to the city and be out here in the peace. It is so nice. I think it's going to snow later this weekend in Portland. So I feel pretty lucky to have caught this stillness. Right down there is uh, Selwood Bridge. Over here, grab the whole cityscape of Portland. All sorts of bird life earlier. This is what I needed. I've had the most stressful last two days of phone calls. Usually it's like, hey, how many of those should I buy? Or what color is the best seller? That's all easy stuff. To the last two days was like, what do I do? Um, stores being like, should I keep those orders going? Not going? Do we? Do the demo day. Well, the government kind of suggested no on those. So today was like canceling demo days. I encourage everybody who's in this business of paddling to get in a boat and do something that's simple, special on the water and share that stoke. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll center you again. At least it did just for me now. And uh, love everyone around you. And all of us, we're all tied together here in this. And I think you'll come up with some of the answers if you're out here. I was like, I'll always have a boat. There will always be water. And uh, anytime I see it, drive by it, I always find myself being like, I should, I should be out there right now. So tonight I did, it was great. Right, carrying back to the truck. It's over there in the back. Why well, I was parked in the back of the parking lot. Oh well. I guess it's just instinct. I'm gonna get this thing loaded and I have to leave the park. I think it closes at dusk, which it definitely is. But I've got my spots. And this little neighborhood where I'm at is one of the good ones. There's a great coffee shop in the morning. nice it's crazy the feeling as I'm carrying this back just as I got closer and closer to that dock it just kind of felt like you know the anxiety of the world come right back at me it's like yeah I don't know it got darker a little bit right out in the water it was light and it got darker but look at those trees let's see right there beautiful wow that's cool, huh? All right. There we go. Oh, home sweet home. All right, let's get this boat put away and uh, get on down the road.
right, I'm in my camper. There it is. It's my little, got some lights going on. I never have the windows open. I keep it stealth. That's why I got the red light on here too. Try to just keep a real low profile. Although in Portland here, no one's really gonna bother you if you're sleeping in your vehicle. It's kind of in vogue. All right, so when I'm urban camping, what kind of spots am I looking for? Let me show you here. Open the door and we'll take a peek. Well, what do I got here? Side of a street. One little move I did. You gotta bring the vehicle up on the curb a little bit right there. For flat sleeping. See, a little flat sleeping action right there. I'm in front of a bank. Bank is always a good spot. There's probably cameras pointing toward me. And no one's gonna do a lot of crime in front of a bank. You can always run to the, you know, camera. Now I pulled up real tight here. No one can park me in. I gotta remember to back up because I put it right against that tree. It's kind of a busy street over there, but that's the street I need to be in the morning. So I just start it and go. Make sure everything's all locked up safe. Good. Boat's up high. There's no light on this street, if you'll notice. That's not, you don't want the overhead light. There's one over there. That keeps enough light on my boats. Everything's all buttoned up good. Coming around. All right, all right, there's the rig. Nobody else sleeping. Also, across the street, that's not a residential. That's a business of some sort, like a healing center. So, no one's gonna bother me. Here comes the vehicle. The trailer's nice for that. Let's get back in this camper. Back in the camper, oh, so safe and good in here. You know, I got young kids. So when I hit the road or at home, I'm up at like six every morning, 5.30, getting kids going, off to the bus at seven. Then I'm doing uh, office calls and work all day. Kids come home, 3.30. Um, if, I can, if I have to work, I work. Otherwise I'm playing with the kids. Last one's a late nighter. He goes to sleep at 9.30. I do a little work until 11.30 and go to sleep and repeat. So I'm on the road, I just gotta paddle in, and I plan to get up in that bed and get to sleep early tonight. I gotta be at uh, Next Adventure, and their parking is very difficult in the morning. So what uh, I do is I'll wake up at about 4.35, drive in, get parked, and uh, be all situated uh, before other vehicles take my parking spots. All right, five in the morning. I'm up, time to move this vehicle, get to my uh, morning clinic. down here. Uh, Portland's next adventure is in southeast Portland. This is uh, an area that has a lot of homelessness and uh, you know just graffiti walls painted. Uh, it's a pretty tough neighborhood and yet it's also changing a lot. So uh, next adventure is on the back of this building right here. Uh, right over there, you'll see all tents right along the sidewalk. And if we were to walk around the building right now, you'll see uh, probably about 10 to 15 tents. That is a uh, rack attack right there. That is, uh, they are partnered with Next Adventure and do all the rack installs. So it's an interesting neighborhood because right there you have a tequila bar and you have apartments and businesses.
So those were all people sleeping right there in tents. And then we come into Nice Adventures area here. This is their dumpster zone. Usually how it was picked over. So this is Next Adventure store. Look at those doors beat down. And there's their store right there. This is uh, 7th Avenue in Portland. And we're gonna go back to the vehicle. All right, just did a clinic, and now I'm out of here. Now I'm out here at Scapoose Bay, one of the largest uh, backwater bays on the Columbia River. I think it is the largest. And there's uh, Next Adventure's Scapoose Bay Paddle Sports. We're gonna go uh, test paddle some canoes, paddle out that way. Um, pretty quiet out here for obvious reasons. All right, here I am, I'm in Scapoose Bay Paddling. This is a store I've been coming to for like close to 20 years. It's outside of Portland on Highway 30 on the way to the coast and just beautiful. The store is just really cool because they're also kind of the camping shop. There's Chris back there. Hi, Chris. <laughs> uh, he's enjoying a rainy day out here. It's supposed to be snow this weekend, so he'll be chilling. But they have everything you need, including camping gear, sleeping bags, tents. And uh, so it's kind of a one-stop shop for outdoor adventure and they are obviously owned by next adventure so they have all the great deals that next adventure has um, i have some crazy just tales from this store i've spent a lot of evenings sleeping in the camper out in the parking lot a lot of late night paddles moonlight paddles here this is just as a rep every so often you have a store that is just like home so chris was a little surprised when i walked in here and started treating it like my house but i had to explain I got, I got the rights. Look, they even have all the fishing stuff. This is major great fishing. You guys are gonna get busy with fishing, huh? So, yeah. Yeah, there he is, cool. <laughs> How's it going? Ah, the part of my job I love, solo canoes. Uh, I love it all, but this is a real passion of mine. Uh, there's a gentleman that came down from Washington to check out these beauties. That's uh, all Kevlar and carbon trim, and he's in an all carbon boat. And a next adventure, one of the things behind me, that's an old, uh, airplane seaplane boat hanger and they have that thing on floating docks and it's full of their whole rental fleet so you can come down here and rent and just like boosh you're gone awesome i'm gonna go paddle see you later Canceled on Saturday. It's supposed to snow up in the mountains. The mountains are that way. I'm headed that way. And it's I'm in the foothills and it's already snowing. So we'll see if this rig can make it that way. Oh man, it's not good. Not good at all. Look at that. I'm just in the foothills still. It was supposed to be warm. I thought I could sneak over. week ever. I'm now stuck on top of San Ian Pass. The problem is I'm on an uphill incline. I'm in four-wheel drive. I might not be able to get started. This is just this week. A semi truck that's stuck up ahead. And so I found a place that I think I'll be able to get traction to get going. I'm really worried that I'm going to get further up. It gets a little steeper up there and there's two more turns to the top. I just can't be stopped up here for long. Four-wheel drive right now, but with that big trailer, Going uphill, starting and stopping, it's not good. Traffic seems to be moving very little. Uh, there's a lot of people up here right now, all trying to get over. Hey, hey, hey. All right, I'm moving, slow. 
That was super stressful because if I'm slipping, I'll slide back into cars. I could have stopped this whole thing just like this semi. Still looks like it's stopped up ahead here, but I'm getting closer and closer to the top. There's a passing lane up ahead. I'm just trying to go real slow so that I don't get in a situation where I'm stopped on a steep slope. I don't know why I'm so red. Is that stress? COVID? What's going on? Just try to breathe, man. This is, uh, for my first episode, this is a lot of drama, at least for me. I don't know about you. All right, uh, Pacific Crest Trail, just passed it. That means I'm on top. Uh, they're running two lane traffic using pilot cars. I'm going 30 miles an hour, which is rejoicing. Still trying to keep plenty of distance ahead of me and the cars ahead. Pavement! Yeah! Pavement! I'm out of four wheel drive. That was a relief, actually, when I was in four wheel drive. I think my uh, one of my gears uh, slipped a little bit. Felt a little clunk on their foot. Um, I was going real slow, leaving lots of space in front of me. And now I'm caught up to traffic, which is again going slow. There must be a semi truck dragging um, down, which is just fine with me. I leave them lots of space and uh, not using my brakes a lot, trying to use the gears to downshift. I mean, that's the thing. You drive this in an SUV with traction tires, what I just did, you're not thinking about it at all. You're just like, oh, wait, what do you want to listen to next? We're stuck in traffic. Me? If I got stuck going up that hill, there's no turning this thing around. I would have stopped all of it. That's what's basically happened with a semi-truck driver. And uh, if I start slipping on a downhill on ice into people, I, and that happened to me last year where I slipped like 50 yards and almost had to put it into a snow bank. So I'm seeing some lights up ahead. I'm just taking it real slow, letting a lot of space. And uh, I'm coming down Sandy M Pass into Sisters. I don't drink anymore. It's been a couple of years, pretty proud of that. But if I did, I would hit Sisters Brewery. I still don't know why my face is this red. Oh boy. My mom says that her son is a truck driver for a living. And right there, I was just a truck driver for a living. Whew. I'm down in Central Oregon. It's 40 degrees. It's gonna snow here the next couple days. I've made it, uh, and I think that's it. I mean, you're hearing people say they're not going out for nothing but the essentials, and I think pretty much every event is going to be canceled for at least the next four weeks. I just don't see how any shop can promote getting together. So, this world of paddle sports right now is gonna be about us enjoying the boats we have, the gear we have, Maybe even, you know, borrow, renting, borrowing, and getting outdoors, being safe in our community, and uh, making sure that we all do our part to try to keep everybody happy and healthy uh, in light of all this anxiety. I'm going right through uh, Tumalo right now area between Sisters and Bend. And you can see we are in the high desert Obviously, no snow and much uh, calmer weather here. Check in when I get home. I literally just pulled into Bend and that storm that I just drove through is now here, but the trailer is parked. So now I usually finish every trip by having to empty out all the food that I got stashed in there and all my office materials and so forth. And uh, today I'm gonna shower, change all my clothes, and then I uh, catch up with my loved ones. All right, over and out.